before you begin watching and listening to this week's sermon message, I just wanted to remind you that this is the day that our God has made. And I hope you can rejoice and be glad in it. And the reason is because you are loved. God loves you. And that's our ultimate message, is to let you know and let all people know that God loves you just as you are and just as you're becoming. As this message of love enters our heart, it changes us from the inside out. This is our mission, is to share God's love and let the Holy Spirit in us do the work. You can be part of extending a message of transforming love with the world. We invite you, if you are blessed or touched by this message today, to consider making a contribution to this ministry. You can go to mccgd.org and click on the Donate Now button, or you can send a check to the address at the bottom of your screen. Any donation in any amount is a blessing, and we appreciate it greatly. Now, I hope that as you listen to this message today, you will hear a word from God through my words, a word that may touch your heart, draw you closer to God, and motivate you to greater acts of service, of love. Have a great week. God, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even from far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, God, that you don't already know completely. You surround me front and back. You put your hand on me. That kind of knowledge is too much for me. It's so high above me that I cannot fathom it. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know that very well. My bones weren't hidden from you when I was being put together in a secret place, when I was being woven together in the depths, in the deepest part of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo, embryo <clears throat> and on your scroll every day was written that that was being formed for me before any one of them had happened. God, your plans are incomprehensible to me. Their total number is countless. If I tried to count them, they'd outnumber the grains of sand. If I came to the very end, I'd still be with you. As we begin exploring our theme of 2020 vision, we make use of the tables. And what's the purpose of the tables? Why do we have tables here? Is it to hold your coffee cup? No, but that's convenient, isn't it? And we've had less spillage. Yay! That's not why. Is it to hold all the paper? No, but it's very, you, you are sharing more prayers because you have a surface to write on. So that's a good thing. Why do we have the tables? Sharing. sharing. Yes, to nurture community, to help uh, facilitate a way for us to connect with one another and share. So our first question today, our conversation number one is very easy. If you would share in twos or threes, how many? Right, because you can't hear the whole table, so we're sharing in twos or threes. Just turn to uh, people at your table, and here's your first question. Do you wear glasses or contacts or use reading glasses, and how often do you get your eyesight checked? Go. Well, that was a pretty easy question, wasn't it? <laughs> pretty easy question to answer. Uh, I'm one of those people that have worn glasses for many, many years, and some of you have known me a long time, and you, some of, there's a few in this room that would remember when I wore glasses that were thick like bottle caps. Some of you, yeah, there's some hands over there. They were very thick. And then I had that pleasure of having uh, laser eye surgery and uh, didn't have to wear glasses for a few years, went back to glasses, and good grief, now I'm facing cataracts. So it'll be changing yet again. Things happen with our eyesight and changes, doesn't it? And every time you get new glasses, you can see things sharper, and don't the colors change too? Do you, oh, yeah, it's amazing. So checking our eyes has something to do with how we see. So you have good eyesight, and you can have your eyesight assisted with lenses, but how observant are you? That's a whole different thing, isn't it? You can have 20-20 vision and not see anything. 
You may completely miss what's right in front of you, what's right under your nose. Being observant is more than good eyesight. So I want to ask you again to think about how observant are you? And I'm going to invite you to watch this short video and pay very, very close attention to the instructions. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? Go! It's easy to miss something you're not looking for. How many people saw the bear the first time? No. We were busy counting, right? And we didn't notice something else that was happening in the scene. You can go ahead. Yeah. So there's something else that was going on, and we often miss it. This is a commercial, actually, that's used in Great Britain to create awareness for safety on the roads for cyclists. That's why at the end it said, watch out for cyclists. Is that not a great commercial? Yeah because you don't even notice it at first, and then it's like it caught your attention, and then they say it's, not always, it's easy to miss something you're not looking for, so be aware of the, of the cyclists. We need to notice things. We need to notice what's going on. We need to notice what God is up to, amen? What God is doing, and broaden our eyesight. We need to use our eyesight and our brains, use our focal points, the thing that we're working on at the moment, and use our peripheral vision, both. Good? We can see what is important to us, usually. Although sometimes we can't even see what's important to us. True? <laughs> we might be seeing what we think is important to us. But the question today is, are we noticing what's important to God? Do we really see what's going on with our loved ones, with our friends, with our coworkers, with our neighbors? Are we noticing what's going on in their lives? And do we notice God-given opportunities to share love? Are we noticing them? Are we missing them completely? Our eyesight and our insight are connected. Listen to this word from the Gospel of John. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. Got doubts? Got questions? Come and see. That's the invitation. Like Nathanael, who had questions, we are invited to come and see the divine for ourselves. And that's true for the people in your lives who have questions, who have doubts, that we are to invite them to come and see. But today the question is for you who are here, what is it that God wants you to see? As followers of Jesus, what are we to notice and take notice of? We just might see God at work in someone's life. And at first we might be tempted to say, how could God possibly be working in that person? Oh, yes, we might say that. We might be like Nathaniel who said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And we might be saying, can anything good be in that person? Sometimes, sometimes the nicest people you meet are covered in tattoos. And sometimes the most judgmental people you meet go to church on Sunday. We can dismiss people that God puts in our path because of our judgments, can't we? We sang the song earlier today, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And I ask, do we really mean it? Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you. Do you? Do you want to see God in every person? Do you want to see God everywhere you're moving all week long? Not just Sunday. All week long? 
And are you paying attention to what God is showing you? Having noticed something, is it registering? Because <laughs> sometimes we can notice and then dismiss, right? But are, are you registering with it? Does it have meaning? Meaning for you, meaning for God. Does it give you a clue on how you might connect with another person? Just to be aware of something that might give you an insight and a, a way to even engage in conversation with another. I think God gives us these clues all the time. Do you? I enjoy relaxing with television. I do. And there's a new show this season that I quite like. It's called Forever. A few of you like Forever. And I don't need to tell you the premise of the show. It doesn't really matter. Other than to say he's a forensic coroner and uh, leaving out the details of his life or the premise of the series, except to tell you that he is extremely observant, extremely observant, and he's able to quickly draw conclusions from the things that he sees, and that enables him then to do his job. Here's a little scene from the pilot for this series. It's the opening scene of the series. My name is Henry Morgan. My story is a long one. It might sound a bit implausible. In fact, you probably won't believe me, but I'll tell you anyway. Because beyond all else, I have lots and lots of time. How did you know I was Russian? Korovka, Russian chocolate. You have a smudge. <laughs> Good luck at the performance tonight. Sorry. I noticed the indentations on your fingers. At first I thought violin. The spacing's a bit too wide and there's no markings under your chin, so cello. Oh. Performance. Your collar has a bit of moisture, freshly showered. So I assumed you were either headed to work or going out on a date. And with all due respect, it would be unusual for a woman as beautiful as you to be taking the subway to a date. You see a lot. Well, I've seen a lot. Two strangers on the subway connecting. Someone highly observant and noticing indentations on her fingertips, too far apart to be a violin, no mark under the chin, I guess cello. <laughs> Imagine, but it, it made an opportunity for a conversation. How observant are you? And what do you do with that? So I want to invite us to participate in another conversation here at your table. What are you observing about each other today? I want you to Notice the people at your table and share with each other and use your powers of observation, perhaps as you came in the room today, perhaps from the earlier sharing, and see if you can discover at least one new thing about the people at your table. Check it out. Are you noticing some things? Yeah? Just that power of noticing. You know, the other day I was uh, with Bobby, and Bobby said to me, are you and Shelly OK? And I said, why on earth would you ask that? She said, well, I noticed you're not wearing your rings. 
oh, I had just left them at home. I hadn't worn any earrings that day. I hadn't worn any jewelry whatsoever. But that's that power of observation that enables you to actually ask a question and check in with someone, right? When God shows us something, it gives us something to actually act on, not just, oh, I wonder what that's about. You know what I mean? And then we end up making up stories in our own mind, don't we? Hello. <laughs> but to notice and observe and then interact, to see if the clues that we're getting, that are God-given clues about someone, move us to an action that will actually help us connect with one another. Listen to this story from the Gospel of Luke. Luke 10, 30 to 37. Jesus replied, A man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He encountered thieves, who stripped him naked, beat him up, and left him for death. Now, it just so happened that a priest, who was also going down the same road, when he saw the injured man, he crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. Likewise, a Levite came to the, by that spot, saw the injured man, and crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. A Samaritan, who was on a journey, came to where the man was. But when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. The Samaritan went to him and bandaged his wounds, tending to them with oil and wine. The next day he took two full days worth of wages and gave them to an innkeeper. He said, take care of him, and when I return, I will pay you back for any additional cost. What do you think? Which one of these three was a neighbor to the man who was encountered thieves? Then the legal expert said, the one who demonstrated mercy toward him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So once again, we're going to use our powers of observation. You heard the story. You, some of you were following it on the screen and read the story. So our powers of observation about what we saw and heard in the story, and I'm going to ask you, what did each character in the story see, and what do you see in the story? So if you would turn in twos or threes, and share for a few moments, what did each character in the story see? You had three characters. And what did you see? What do you see in this story? In pairs of threes, please. Thank you for sharing with one another. Let me have a couple of shares here. What did the character see? What did the character see? An injured man. What else? They, at least two of them saw that it was not their responsibility. Okay. Anything else? Yes. So the, the so the, the first two that went by may have been distracted by how he looked from an external, looked disheveled, uh, looked poor, and not really seeing the injury. Whereas the third person would have, uh, it appears, saw the injury, saw, noticed the injury. Thomas, never mind. Okay, it got covered. Somebody else said it. Ditto. All right. So they may have been in a hurry, had a purpose, a mission, something that they were busy about. And uh, so they crossed the road to the other side to avoid getting involved and keep on with where they were going. That's a good possibility. Yeah. Okay, what did you see in the story, or what, what do you see in the story? A couple of shares. Anybody? saw the Levite, who is in the, in, basically in the employ of the temple, so worked for the church, in other words, that kind of language. So had all, the Levite would have had all their physical needs provided for, and yet could not see this person who uh, was in need of the services of that priest. Good. 
Yes, you can text me too. I had a text earlier in the service that said, God is amazing. Do you agree? God is amazing that the psalm text that we read was one that had been being read daily all this week. See, noticing, noticing how God brings things together. Well, I think that you're right, that the Levite and the priest, both who were in the employ of the church in different ways, and it was the temple at that time, but we'll just say church for our purposes of understanding the connection, okay? So the Levite and the priest were both religious people engaged in that kind of work, and they did not want to be associated with that individual. In that ancient time, they didn't want to be ritually unclean. It would be inconvenient, right? And so they literally passed by. And we can ask ourselves, did they not see the suffering? That's what Melanie was saying. Maybe they just saw the tattered clothes and didn't really see the injury. Did they not see the suffering or did they choose not to see it? How many of us are guilty of choosing not to see it? Yeah. I raised a comment uh, this morning with Shelly, and I raised it again yesterday with somebody. I've been disturbed this week uh, that we want to compare violence somehow. Mm -hmm. That the violence of 12 people dying in France was horrible with terrorism. And we've had marches around the world in support of France. Je suis Charlie, right? I am Charlie. And we have seen political leaders go to stand with France. Yet 2,500 people were killed in a village in Nigeria this week, too, by Boko Haram. Another terrorist group. And I do not see us having the same, just the same kind of, of, of shock and dismay at 2,500 people being killed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Sometimes we don't want to notice. That's Nigeria. Sometimes we don't want to notice. France, they're more like us. Do you hear what I'm saying? But we need to notice. We need to notice. And we need to raise things in our conversations with people as we notice them. Amen? See something. The good Samaritan is called good. A Samaritan, someone who's already outside of life. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Apply it to yourself. Is one who notices. Didn't have to but did, chose to, saw a person, saw a human being who was suffering. Saw a human being, that's where it begins, right? Who is suffering and responds. And the good Samaritan's eyes seem to be connected to the heart. It's not just an observation. There's not simply a description, but having noticed, it's connected to the heart, and what happens? The good Samaritan is moved to an act of compassion. The noticing for people of faith, the noticing that connects your ears and your eyes to your heart, then moves us to action. You don't want to act? Be blind. Don't see it. But if we see, really see, then we are going to be moved to compassion. In Luke 11, 34, in the New Living Translation, it says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are good, your whole body also is full of light. But when they're bad, your body also is full of darkness. In other words, our compassion, our deeds of love begin with noticing, with seeing a need and responding to it. We can't take those actions till we've noticed. Amen? And Jesus tells us in some very blunt, uncompromising language how to improve our spiritual eyesight, our spiritual vision. Jesus says in Matthew, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, help me, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Jesus is pretty blunt, don't you think? Pretty blunt about eyesight. We need to let go of our judgments of others, especially that judgment of whether or not they're worthy of our time. 
worthy of our involvement. That's that priest and Levite action, right? Let go of those judgments, those assessments, and begin to see one another through the eyes of Jesus. That's our hard work. The world teaches us to have boundaries, right? The world teaches us not to get involved. Isn't that true? Jesus teaches us to get involved. Jesus teaches us to see, to notice, and to respond with compassion. When we start to notice others with our Jesus glasses on, <laughs> something inside us happens. Compassion starts to move in us and move through us so that our aloofness or our callousness towards others gets replaced with genuine, authentic concern. And we are moved to those acts of love, those four acts of love, where we start to respond with true radical hospitality that happens not just in a building we call the church, amen? But that radical hospitality happens wherever we encounter someone. It happens from a heart with genuine authenticness. It, it happens, too, when we ask the questions of, what has happened to you? Or I see that you are in need. I see that you're troubled. What's going on in your life? Where we invite fearless conversation. We're not afraid of connecting. And it moves us to have that divine anticipation that God is up to something. And that in this moment of our connecting one with another, we will see God at work. Isn't that exciting to see God at work? We allow love, divine love, to flow through us when we notice and respond. Let's see who you are in this story and who you want to be. Kid, every time I'm pulling out, he's right there. Man, and someone needs to talk to his parents <laughs> if they're ever at home. What is up with the traffic today? It's and always, every day, this intersection's always crowded. I hate pulling out of here. Let me see these dumb roads. Oh, there's. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm not even here. Right. Great lady. The princess of parking. Oh, sure. Take the spot. Would it be considerate? Oh, are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Oh. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, it's about time. Let's see, what do I want? Uh, yeah, could I add a cookie to that order? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, no problem, only guy in the world. I'm sure you need your cookie. The world? Your oyster, and he's serving your cookies. Thanks, Thank sir. you so much. Uh -huh. What can I get for you? Uh, yeah, I'll have a tall decaf macchiato. Yeah, sure, no problem. Be 385. And uh, it might take a few minutes here. We've got quite a line, obviously, and thanks for your patience. Great. Yeah, <laughs> great. Great for me. Waiting again. Unbelievable. What? What is... What am I supposed to do? How can I how can I do anything about that? Can I even help with that? I don't your copy, sir. Oh. I can't I can't take this anymore. I gotta get out of here. Hey, watch it.
Hey, buddy, come here. Some of us suffer from myopia. My needs, my priorities, my time. Hmm. If we aren't careful, the busyness of life can cause us to have spiritual blindness. Isn't that true? This video reminds us that it's not all about us and that God is inviting us to really see, to see with our heart, to see what's going on with others, to be in relationship, not only with God, but with the people around us, the everyday people that come around us. It's not about doing ministry at the church. It's about doing ministry in the world. Is there an amen in the church? It's not just about seeing what we think is important to us, but it's about really seeing what's important, what's really seeing and seeing all the opportunities that there are to love, to love. I received a text just a moment ago that said that the Good Samaritan was able to, uh, was acquainted with pain and sorrow himself by being the other, or being the outsider in a predominant culture, and thereby, thereby was able to use his own pain to actually help connect with others. Sometimes we use our own pain to focus on poor me, poor me, poor me when our pain, our life experience, can be a tool used by God to connect with others, to relate. Amen? When we start to see the world through Jesus' glasses, when we start to see and notice what's really going on with others, we have opportunity to love. Opportunity when we connect with another to allow that God space between us to be and for God to do something in us and through us, for us to encounter the divine in the other person, as well as for them to see God in us. That outwardly focused mindset enables us to see more, hear more, feel more, and respond with greater compassion. And it sends others a powerful message, like the message of the movie Avatar that says, I see you. Which is just not like I see you, but I see you, I get you. I get you. That's what we're saying to people when we notice and respond. I get you. I noticed you. You matter to me, and you matter to God. So I have an assignment for you this week. Here's a little homework assignment for you spiritually. Every day for the next week, I want you to say this prayer each time you eat, because I'm assuming most people eat three times a day. But if you have five little meals, yay, you'll be praying five times. Okay? If you snack all day long, you will be praying without ceasing. <laughs> but if you would pray this each time you go to eat, Lord Jesus, as I interact with others today, help me to see them as you do. Would you say that prayer with me? Lord Jesus, as I interact with others today, help me to see them as you do. Now, you've read it. Now I want you to say it again so we start to move it from actually seeing it and reading it, even past the brain to starting to understand what it says and to feel it. So let's say it again as a prayer. Lord Jesus, as I interact with others today, help me to see them as you do. Just turn and glance at the people at the table that you're with, that you've shared with today. And say this prayer again, thinking of them. Lord Jesus, as I interact with others today, help me to see them as you do. Now just kind of turn your neck a little bit more and look around the room. This is your place you, pr you practice. You have an opportunity to interact with others right when we dismiss church, even before you get out into the world. So with other people that are in this room, let us pray. Lord Jesus, as I interact with others today, help me to see them as you do. Do you have plans to watch the football games later this afternoon? Maybe with other people, maybe not. Maybe some of you are going shopping. Maybe 
something else, but thinking about people that you know you're going to interact with today or people you're planning on interacting with tomorrow morning. Let us pray one more time. Lord Jesus, as I interact with others today, help me to see them as you do. I encourage you to pray that each time you eat. Would you pray with me? God, we ask that you help correct our vision today and help us to see through your eyes. Help us to not see with judgment, to attend to the issues in our own life that we need to deal with, but help us simply see others with compassion, not someone to be fixed, but someone to connect with. Help us to understand that we are all connected by your love. So God, use us as your instruments to share in that radical hospitality wherever we go, to engage in fearless conversations where we know we can't control the conversation, we don't know where it might, may go. Help us, God, to do so with genuine humility because we know there's stuff in our lives that we need to attend to as well. Keep working on us to suspend all those judgments and help us, God, be aware of that divine anticipation that you will be at work in us and through us and around us and that we may encounter you in others. So open our eyes. We want to see Jesus. Open our eyes and open the eyes of our heart to see you at work in the world. We pray. Amen. After spending nearly 40 years of my life in social work and the ministry, it would be easier to just be able to look beyond people and not see them. And sometimes I think you and I probably do that. It's just part of our lives and culture. And you, we have to learn in our lives that you can't fix everyone or do something about everything. But we have to see it. And I think one of the great lessons that I've learned in my faith is to not be afraid to see it. Because then, only then, can you really honestly try to do something that helps other people. And communion, I think, calls us to the moment and the time and the place where we are all together. We are all one, one body. We are all part of. It is the time that the Christ is there for all of us because in the act of what happened in Jesus' life and in Jesus' death, we are gathered as one people. We are loved. We are included. We are fed. We are blessed. And that I think it's the heart of communion, and it's part of the heart of this message today. So to part, partly to get us there each Sunday, we do as Jesus did. We take bread, know that Christ blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, and saying, eat this, and as you do, remember me. See me in the breaking of the bread, and know that as you eat this bread, you receive me into your life, and I am there with you. And in a similar way, we raise the cup and know that Jesus blessed and shared it, and we share it this day because Christ says to us and helps us to know that this is the cup of our life, this is the cup of grace, this is the cup of things to come. And when we eat and drink, and drink from this cup, this common cup, we all share it. And we all know the love that Christ has for all of us in the inclusion that he has and the strength and the energy that we are given so that we can see and we can care and we can share. So in this day, do not be afraid. The words of Jesus come home to all of us. Remember me. Eat and receive and remember. Thank you. Loving God, pour out your spirit on these common elements of grape and grain, because in so doing they become more than they are, just like we become more than we are as you fill our hearts with and lives with your spirit. Thank you this day that you love us, that you bless us, and that you help us come and be in this community and know that we are loved in your name. Amen. <laughs>